In today's message, I want to address a topic that might feel a bit old school to some, but it's as relevant as ever. We're diving into the subject of demons and demonology. Yes, you heard that right. Demons. In our modern rational world, it might seem a bit out of place to talk about such things. Many people would prefer to think of demons as just spooky stories from the past or silly characters in horror movies. But there's more to it, especially from a Christian standpoint. Now, if Jesus hadn't mentioned demons himself, this might be a controversial topic among Christians today. But the fact is, he did talk about them. And not just in passing. Jesus addressed the existence of demons directly and seriously. He didn't avoid the topic or sugarcoat it. He faced it head on, which tells us something about its importance. Let's be clear from the start. Messing with demons is dangerous. It's not something to take lightly or brush off as just fun and games. Whether it's through media, games, or any form of entertainment that trivializes the dark spiritual realities, engaging with this world can have real consequences. It's not just about avoiding scary experiences. It's about understanding the spiritual risks involved. This might sound like something out of a fantasy book to some. Our culture, after all, has a fascination with the supernatural. Witchcraft, wizardry, and all things magical are often romanticized in movies and TV shows. It might seem cool or edgy to flirt with these ideas, but the Bible warns us strongly against such things. There's a reason for that warning. Consider how today's entertainment often targets the young, drawing them into a world where casting spells and summoning spirits are portrayed as normal, even desirable, activities. This normalization can desensitize us to the dangers lurking behind these practices. It's troubling to think about, especially when you consider how impressionable young minds are. It's interesting to note how different our view of demons is from ancient cultures, like the Greeks. Back then, a demon wasn't necessarily evil. The original Greek concept of a demon was more neutral. These were beings thought to offer guidance and protection. But today, the Christian understanding is quite different. Demons are seen as fallen angels, adversaries to God's good creation, and harmful to humans. Let's keep in mind the gravity of this subject. This isn't just about avoiding the dark. For fear of the unknown, it's about recognizing what we open ourselves up to spiritually when we dabble in these realms. Let this be a word of caution. Don't play with demons. The stakes are simply too high. Remember how we talked about Jesus pointing out that demons are here to steal, kill, and destroy. That's directly from the book of John, chapter 10, verse 10. It's a straightforward message, isn't it? But it sets the stage for understanding just how serious the threat is. Demons aren't hanging around for fun. They're here with a destructive agenda. Now, think about where you might encounter this kind of influence. You might believe places like churches are safe zones, right? But the Bible tells us a different story. In Mark 1, verses 22 to 23, there's an account of Jesus teaching in a synagogue, a place of worship, and right there among the congregation is a man with an unclean spirit. This demon speaks out during Jesus' teaching, causing quite a stir. It shows us that these spirits can appear anywhere, even where we feel most secure. Let's consider a modern example. Imagine a small town where a house is infamous for strange occurrences. Noises in the night, eerie shadows moving through rooms, and unexplained chills in the air. 
The family living there often feels watched, and visitors occasionally leave the house feeling ill or terrified. A local pastor, concerned for the family and community, visits to pray and immediately senses a malevolent presence. This pastor, along with some brave members of the community, witnesses inexplicable events during their visit, objects moving on their own, lights flickering without cause, and chilling whispers echoing through empty halls. They leave convinced of the dark influence within the house. Despite their fears, they organize several prayer sessions aiming to cleanse the house. Their experiences, shared through word of mouth and on social media, quickly capture the attention of a wider audience. Now, let's bring in someone like Zach Bagans from our previous discussion, except let's make him a fictional character for this story. He's a paranormal investigator with a knack for finding the most haunted places Intrigued by the story, he decides to check out the house. After spending just a few nights, he encounters the same terrifying phenomena. He concludes that there's something uniquely powerful and dark residing there. It's not just another haunted house, it's something far more sinister. The experiences in this house don't just scare those who enter, they leave physical evidence Imagine if during one of Zack's overnight stays, he records voices and captures images of ghostly figures. These aren't just bumps in the night. They're interactions that suggest a hauntingly intelligent presence. In this fictional scenario, Zack decides that the best course of action is to demolish the house, similar to what happened in the real Gary, Indiana case. He believes that destroying the physical structure might sever the connection these spirits have to our world. It's a drastic measure, but for him, it's the only solution that makes sense given the level of activity recorded. Let's reflect on the takeaway from these stories, both biblical and modern. Whether you're a believer in the supernatural or just enjoy a good ghost story, the message is clear. These encounters suggest that there are forces beyond our understanding, and they can have a real impact on our physical world. It's a reminder of the old warning. Don't invite in what you can't send away. This conversation isn't just about fear, it's about awareness. In the Christian view, it's a call to be vigilant and protective of our spiritual well-being. We might not all face a haunted house, but understanding the potential presence of malevolent forces, as described in these tales, urges us to be cautious about where we tread spiritually. So, talking about these spooky experiences, like objects moving on their own, or people feeling an eerie presence, these aren't just stories. They line up with what the Bible has been telling us about demonic forces for a long time. It's easy for modern folks to brush these off as just weird coincidences or tricks of the mind. But if you're looking at it from a Christian perspective, it's more than that. These are real signs of a battle going on beyond what we can see. Now, the Bible isn't shy about this topic. In fact, it's pretty upfront about the challenges believers might face from these unseen enemies. Take what Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, for we are not ignorant of his designs. This is a heads up to keep alert. It means that we need to be aware of the sneaky ways that these dark forces operate. They're not going to challenge you to a duel in the noon sun. They're more about creeping shadows and subtle tricks. This is where Ephesians 6 verses 10 to 18 comes into play. It talks about putting on the whole armor of God. Why? Because our fight isn't against what we can touch or see. It's against principalities, 
against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's heavy stuff. It means that our real struggles are with forces that aim to mess up not just our day, but our very souls. So, how do you gear up for such a fight? First, you've got the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Honesty's your first line of defense. Then there's the breastplate of righteousness. Living right gives you a sturdy protection against these attacks. Shoes of peace keep you steady and ready to move. The shield of faith? That's what you hold up when things get tough, quenching all those fiery darts thrown your way. Then, don't forget your helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Powerful stuff for defense and attack. And never underestimate the power of prayer. Ephesians ends this passage by urging us to pray all the time, asking for God's help and being watchful. It's like keeping in touch with your commander during battle, making sure you're always ready for whatever comes next. Praying for yourself is good, but also for others, keeping the whole troop strong. It's about staying connected and supported, knowing you're not facing these challenges alone.